Okay, in this example, we are going to find the leading coefficient of a fully factored polynomial. So let's first start by making our fully factored form. And I'm going to let my leading coefficient be a, because I don't know what it is. So I have a, let's see, this is negative 2 over here, and this one is 3. So I have x minus the 0, which is going to be x plus 2. And then I have x minus the 0, which is going to be x minus 3. And actually, as I look closer, I think this one is really 1, negative 1. Okay, let's fix this up a minute. That looks like negative 1, so that's going to be plus 1. There we go. That looks better. Negative 1, positive 3, I think that is from the graph. All right. So. Uh, when we did this for quadratics, you picked a point, and you could pick any point, and you could actually still pick any point. This is a quadratic, and you're finding the leading coefficient, so that still works. Um, you would pick, uh, in this case, probably the y-intercept. So pick the y-intercept, and then the y-intercept is 0, negative 6, so you just simply put 0 in for x, and then solve for a. So this becomes 1, this becomes negative 3. You divide both sides by negative 3, and then you get a equals 2. Okay, so that's still a, a fine method to use. Um, so now we can write our fully factored form with the correct a and we're good to go. So in this case, I picked the y-intercept, 0, negative 6. And of course, on this particular graph, I don't even give you a grid, so it would be very hard to pick something else. All right, let me show you another example. So here's a different example. Um, it is obviously a cubic, and we've got zeros that looks like at 1, and at negative 1, and negative 2. So let's make our fully factored form here. So f of x, remember I don't know my leading coefficient, so I have an x plus 2, and I have an x plus 1, and an x minus 1. All right, and it looks like the y-intercept is 0, negative 6. Obviously, they don't all have a y-intercept of 0, negative 6. But let me show you kind of a little shortcut here. Um, again, certainly putting 0 in for x, and negative 6 in for y, solving for a, that would be just fine. Um, but let me show you a shortcut. If we were to multiply this out, leaving the leading coefficient in the front, the first term is always going to be the x times the x times the x. So it would be an x cubed. And then you're going to have a bunch of other terms in here. You're going to have an x squared and an x. And then way down at the end is going to be 2 times 1 times negative 1. So that's a negative 2. And remember, this just means all the stuff in between. So every term in here has an x in it, except for this last term. And if I pick the point 0, negative 6, which is the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0, which means this is 0. And then whatever we have for x squared, of course, that would be 0. And whatever we had for x, that would be 0. And what I would be left with here is just this negative 2, which you get from multiplying just the last terms together. So this could now look like this. But where there's that y, I have to put the y-intercept. So it would look like this. So the y is. Uh, negative 6 here is the y-intercept. This negative 2 comes from multiplying the last terms of all of my factors together. And then to solve, you're going to divide by negative 2. So you get a equals 3. So that's kind of a shortcut or a, a variation here on picking a point and solving for the leading coefficient. And then, of course, you would end by writing this with the correct leading coefficient, like such. 
this technique is really, um, it, again, it's just a shortcut and it's really useful, um, especially when you get some large polynomials. So this is the end of this lesson.